Hi, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. Shout out to everybody in the chat. Hold up, because I hear myself echo. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, 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 welcome. Shout out to you guys. Uh, let's see. Who do I have in the house? Thank you guys for being here. Let me see who I have in the house. I know I saw Wim. Shout out to you, Shauna B, Hannah Banana, Ro. Welcome, welcome. Petty, Pika. Who else? Sarah. Let's see. Let's see. Petty. Welcome, Chico. DB. DB says, ooh, making it live. It's been a few days. I hope you're doing well, DB. Shout out to you. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Kristen, why is no one listening to the 1999 victim? Oh, for a lot of reasons. For a lot of reasons. I hear myself echo again. Okay. I don't hear myself echo anymore. Sorry about that, y'all. <laughs> I like if I hear myself echo, I have to say something because it's just annoying. Welcome, everybody. Jamie, Sarah Lynn, everybody. Thank you guys. Dallas Val, thank you for becoming a member. Shout out to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Who you said, Teresa says, ban J Lo. She lied on an innocent black man in jail for money and fame. Untalented sellout. Stop worshiping these demons. Lord have mercy, Teresa. Tell me how you really feel. Welcome, everybody. All right, we're going to get it together, okay? Everybody, thank you so much for being here. Shout out to the new members. Let me tell you guys something what got me over here, what got me to even this rabbit hole. Uh, so I was reviewing. I had the opportunity to review the Rodney Jones civil lawsuit against Diddy, okay? And if you guys read that, listen. They, it's it's public record. Search it up. Jones versus Combs. Okay. Google it. And the one that I'm specifically referring to has a lot of pictures. There's a lot of screenshots. We got uh, screenshots of Stevie J doing the, the thing with somebody. Allegedly, these screenshots show Stevie J doing some stuff. Okay. And other stuff to that. There was uh, about two sentences or three sentences total in that complaint that really got me thinking about 1999 in that infamous, famous New York club shooting uh, where Jayla was, uh, you know, dating Diddy at the time and they were at the club. And, you know, back then it was very interesting. Very, you know, she at one point she wore that Versace uh, hoochie dress all the way down there. Y you know, it was that dress. Right. I remember it because I was in high school and it was like on Seventeen magazine. It left nothing for the imagination. She was back then trending, viraling, whatever the hell you would call it around that time. Wim, thank you for gifting memberships. Thank you. Thank you. Ooh, Mr. Tommy. Tommy's like, oh yeah, I remember her. I Shout out to Tommy. Tommy, I know you better talk about this later on. I'm telling you because it really got me thinking, right? So I was looking into this. I said, something is telling me there was something that Maria's like, it was a great dress. <laughs> uh, it was, it was, uh, Back when being risque was like really risque, like you couldn't wear something like that. Now everybody's everybody's showing the thing at this point. Nothing is to the imagination anymore. Okay. So I read the Cassie Ventura lawsuit, right? I saw the settlement quickly, right away, less than 24 hours. And there was something that was very similar from the Cassie Ventura lawsuit to the Rodney Jones lawsuit. And the thing that was very similar was that in there, it said that Cassie would hold Diddy's weapons. And in the Rodney Jones lawsuit, it said something to the effect of on the night of the shooting that J-Lo was holding on to the weapons of that shooting in New York and that she had passed that weapon off to Diddy the night of the shooting. There were various witnesses that said that Diddy had shot folks, but the person, now that night, Diddy, J-Lo, and a bunch of other people shot, every, Shine was charged, everybody was charged initially, and then charges were dropped like right away, all right? And Diddy went to trial, and I believe he was, um, uh, what is it, what is it? Um, I forgot the legal word, but it was not guilty. It was just they were able to figure it out, uh, the whole situation. It was just a really weird way to kind of play out the situation. Um, 
Shine, who was at the time Diddy's protege, up and coming artist, who was said to have sounded very similar to Biggie, right? No contest. Thank you, Jay. No, acquitted. That's the word, not no contest. It's acquitted. Thank you, it talks, baby girl. Shout out to you. He was acquitted. So I always found it interesting. I said, wait a minute. Um, Rodney Jones in this complaint said that Diddy was the gunman and that Jayla was holding these weapons. He would no, it, it was uh, acquitted, not exact, no Alfred plea or nothing. He was just acquitted. That's a different uh, legal term. Lamb, Lamb, people have said that, right? So I kind of sat there and I was like, wait a minute, what? Like, it, it's all kind of playing out to me. And I started watching the E! True Hollywood story, which we all know it's the E! True fake story of J-Lo and when they were dating. And I was like, wait a minute, I had watched this because I remember it was like on reruns. It was J. There was eyewitnesses. There really was, right? He was. Shine was destined for the same fame as Biggie because of his distinct voice. If you hear his voice, it gives very much like Biggie. Ooh, my computers are shaking. Sorry. It gives very much like he just has this like Biggie tone to it. And he was destined supposedly to be famous and a big billionaire and whatever, right? So I started watching that E! True Hollywood story, which is E! True fake story at this point, because I was like, wait a minute, this is so fake. Like, it just, it's a fluff piece. I don't know if you guys remember when, like, E.T., the channel or whatever, then, you know, you would play it and it'd be like on reruns and you'd watch J-Lo, the E! True behind the music, or that would be VH1, uh, E! True, true Hollywood story of such and such celebrity, and this was J-Lo's. So I started watching it and I was like, Wait a minute. So this doesn't say anything about Diddy giving her the guns to hold. This doesn't say anything about that, right? Nothing, nothing, nothing. So I, I just started kind of pulling the onion a little bit. I was like, let me go back a little bit to just more articles from like 1999 where shit wasn't really peeled, where things were just written, where things were developing. Because thank God we found some that weren't like edited or anything like that. What I thought was interesting, too, was that as I was doing that, other folks were also talking about this trending news. And they were saying, well, this is now everybody's going back to their conspiracy theories. J-Lo and Diddy theory goes viral. I said, Lord, have mercy. Why does it have to be a, a, a conspiracy theory? Is it possible? I said, is it very possible that J-Lo was in a very tumultuous kind of relationship with Diddy at the time, okay? And yeah, she held his guns and they went to this club where no celebrity goes to, right? Uh, just happens to be there and uh, shit went down. And J-Lo handed him the guns and it was Diddy who shot that nightclub and they were able to immediately get people quiet, pay people up. I mean, is it possible is it? So I said, I got to get my bunny ears and I wore them earlier. I said, these are my conspiracy theory bunny ears. Um, I got to make them in tin foil. It, you know what? It's Hawks, baby girl. You had never like that truly. So I said, let me channel this right now. Let me just channel this. Okay. I put them on and I did the video earlier and I said, well, since everybody's saying that we're throwing conspiracy theories out and I'm like, no, we're just not eating the bullshit anymore from media anymore we're just not we're not so i you know activated the bunny ears and said let me do it all right so let me read this article because this is what really got me started it said jennifer lopez has once again been dragged into the controversy surrounding her ex-boyfriend sean diddy combs with the theory going viral that release that that the release of her music film which has been widely mocked was time to distract from the rapper's issues look I'm going to tell you guys something. I'm going to be very, very frank. I am not a J-Lo fan. I've never been a J-Lo fan. Uh, personally, you know, I'm a Selena fan, a Selena Quintanilla fan. Do I think she did a great job in that acting? She sure as hell did. Great. I would have preferred if the family would have picked somebody with uh, uh, a little bit more of a, 
maybe a Mexicana, you know, because because Selena was Mexican American, like that would have been nice. But they picked J Lo. I'm just not a J Lo fan. I've always felt like J Lo. I don't know. She doesn't have the vocals. I don't see. I just don't get singer from her personally. Y'all can like her, okay? I just don't get singer from her. I don't. I don't get that. Even in her new music, I don't. I don't see the talent. I'm just saying. So, anyways, uh, I know she did like her release of the what is it? She had a documentary. I didn't watch it because, like I said, I'm not that invested. Um, and people on TikTok were dragging her, specifically Puerto Ricans, specifically people from the Bronx were dragging her because, you know, she's saying, well, wait a minute, you're only like, you only rep the Bronx or you only rep like PR when it's convenient to you. That's what people are saying on the TikTok streets. I played a video already, right? So I thought that was interesting. I said, ah, so the people are mad at her. That's what they are. That that I, I would agree. I just don't think that she could ever really, um, she could never fill in those shoes. She did a great job. She's an actress. Her acting is great. But as a person, I just don't see her as a genuine person. I see her as Hollywood. And that's how I see her. That's it. Okay. And not only that, not to mention, she was stealing folks' vocals, Ashanti, other artists. Yeah, I, I'm just not down with J-Lo. Uh, yeah. Anyways. <laughs> Sarah's like, eh, mi gente Latina. That's right. Okay, so let's get it together. So she does this video. Uh, what is it? They're trying. People are speculating that the reason why she dropped this was because she knew that a lot of this controversy with Diddy was going to come, and she was trying to hush hush the folks. Could have very well been the case. Uh, a Hollywood A-lister, Lopez, has become the target of conspiracy theorists. Now we're the conspiracy theorists. I got my bunny ears activated. Okay. Were the conspiracy theorists as Comb faces more scrutiny over allegations of sex trafficking? Combs 54 had his homes in Los Angeles, Miami, raided on Monday by Homeland Security, which we covered and we talked about. All right. Which was conducting a search as part of sex trafficking investigations, the Associated Press reporting, citing law enforcement sources. Very much in their 30s, Puffy and J-Lo. This is back when they were together at the 42nd Grammy Awards back in the 2000s. The rapper has also been the subject of several civil lawsuits in recent months. We know that. Uh, Combs has denied all claims against him and slammed the Homeland Security raids through statements issued via his lawyer. Now, what do you? What, what is every celebrity that's being currently slammed? What, what do they always say? What do they always say? It's a witch hunt. It's it's always a witch hunt, right? It's all listen, everybody got it wrong. All 50 people that are speaking up against you, it's a witch hunt. Just it is what it is. Mm. So yeah. Okay, let's get it together. Uh Jones lawsuit mentioned Lopez who dated Combs for two years until 2021 or 2001. It referenced the 1999 incident in which Lo the couple were arrested after leaving a New York nightclub following a shooting. Lopez charges were immediately dropped. Immediately dropped, right? Combs was acquitted of all of charges relating to the incident, but his mentee rapper Shy was convicted. Jones' lawsuit claims that Combs confessed to him that he was responsible for the shooting and alleged Lopez had carried the gun he used into, into the club that night for him. So it got me to thinking, and I said, Lord have mercy. So there was witnesses that night, various witnesses that said that they saw Diddy shooting. I kind of wonder then which gun was it that shot the woman, Natanya Rubens? Was it the one that J Lo was given allegedly, because that's what the uh, civil complaint says, or was it another one that somebody else must have had? Maybe Shy came in with with his guns. I don't know other people. It made me wonder a little bit about that. And I started thinking, I said, wait a minute, like, 
So let's just go back. Let's go back in time when all when it was a much different time back in the 2000s, you know, all this other stuff. Let's allow uh, the voice of Miss Natanya Rubin heard, right? Let, let's talk about this. I'm going to play this. I'm going to give some commentary. You guys, let me know your thoughts in the comments, okay? This is Miss Natanya, all right? She alleged that she was shot by Diddy. She said it. She'll say it here again. She said people ignored her. She said she said it when she went into surgery. She said it. She was paid. She had a lawsuit with this man. And then she was further victimized afterwards. Something's up. Hey, how you doing? So, hmm. Here today about this latest lawsuit with the P. Diddy, Puff Daddy, Puffy, Sean Puffy Combs, whatever you want to call them lawsuit that has come out involving the producer little rod so basically his last two lawsuits or last two major lawsuits um the one with cassie she made mention that puffy made her carry his guns into nightclubs and wherever they went and he threatened her to make her feel like she had to do so and of while there were lots of things of importance that stood out to me and I'm going to tell you why. In this lawsuit with the producer Little Rod, they were both essayed by him and threatened and physically harmed. But in this lawsuit, he appears to be a very young producer to me. Hmm. But he said something very specific. As a means of threatening him, Puffy said, that's why I shot up the club in New York back in 1999 and let Shine take the fall for it. Let me tell you why that's of utmost importance to me. Because I am the woman who he shot in the face in that 1999, December 27th, 1999, Club New York shooting. I have told everyone ad nauseum since then, even the surgeon who did the surgery to take the bullet. I got shot in my face with a nine millimeter, excuse me, nine millimeter hollow point bullet. Wow. Called a cop killer. I literally have told everyone and never changed what I said. I watched him. I got pow pow in the face. I watched him fire the gun. I've said it all this time. Even the surgeon who did my surgery to take out part of the bullet fragments that was aspirating into my lungs and try to remove as many bullet fragments as possible testified in the criminal trial that while they were putting me under, I was screaming, Puffy, pew, pew, me in the face. Why didn't anybody listen to this woman? What happened here? Why didn't anybody listen to this woman? She also, she settled with Diddy civilly, okay? Now, I don't know the terms of what happened, but why didn't anybody, let me tell you something right now that's happening. Let me explain something to you guys. News Nation, I just saw Brian Enton tweet. Brian Enton said that they were going to have this woman on News Nation to speak about it. We're just now getting this situation up again. She deserves every coin that she does. But I'm just having a hard time. Like, if there was witnesses that saw him shoot, because if you read articles from 1999, you hear that there are witnesses that saw Diddy shoot this woman. You have to kind of understand, like, well, what happened? Like, what? How did he get acquitted? Who who got paid off? Right? Something must have happened. Okay, Rihanna, I will check my inbox. Thank you so much for the two dollars, love. Shout out to you. I will definitely check it out. Um, I, I'm kind of wondering. So apparently she's going to be on News Nation. I saw uh, Brian Enton's, like I said, tweet. This should be interesting. Should be very interesting. He testified in the criminal trial. It is in the record. 
They all knew he did it. Everybody knew he did it, but he paid off the club bouncer named Sharice and all these other people and the club owners with their video to hide the video. That's his MO. I told everybody. And, and by the way, these people testified, which we have a little bit of an interview with Shot back in 2004. So we were pulling some of this on you and you got to go back, right? That's how you get to where we need to go to further understand this. It's crazy, right? That this man almost took my life, has traumatized my life, has caused undue harm, irreparable damage to my life, lied his behind off. I've had all these youngins on the internet harassing me, swearing that I'm making it up that he did it. And look what he did to little Rod. He threatened him. Oh, you don't think I bust my gun? I shot up the club in Club New York and let Shine take the fall for it. I shot them people. Well, well, well. It only took 24, 24 whole years. 24 years. Come out. You see this tattoo? This commemorates me getting shot. It took 24 years for him to come out and say it. I've been saying it all along. But y'all yep. pick and choose who y'all want to believe. Oh, baby. You ain't seen nothing yet. Not only did he pew, 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 pew me in the face, he also set off a course of harassment against me for the past 24 years. Yep. When I tell you the things I went through, there was a time in 2017 and 2018 where I got seven flats on my BMW, seven, That's crazy. the same tire in a two year span, seven. So it wasn't, I mean, you, she was being silenced. She was being attacked. She was, they were doing this y'all. Seven on the same tire and they were all new. Every time it happened, I had to get a new tire. I have the pictures to prove it. Harassing me. You want to know why? Because prior to Cassie, I was the only person to be victimized by him and then to successfully sue him and get paid. One second. So with that being said, though, in a 1999 article, and I do have to point this out, that um, there was an incident before the shooting in September. This was an article from 1999. I have to point this out, y'all. In September, Combs pleaded guilty to aggravated harassment in a case in which he had been charged with attacking a record executive by the name of Steve, I think it's Stoked or Stout, with a chair, a telephone, and a champagne bottle. In April, Combs was ordered to attend a one-day anger management counseling program. Combs has been has said he was angry at Stout, who is a consultant to rapper Nas. Over the video for Nas, Hate Me Now, in which Combs appeared. In the initial version of that video, Combs was shown hanging from a cross. Combs, who gained fame from his production work with the late rapper, the notorious B.I.G., became a star on his own in 1997 with multi-platinum albums. Okay, so we know that. And that should give you guys kind of an idea of before, before the shooting, there was the assault on another executive producer. So Diddy has always had this record. This is not new. This is the this is how the get down gets down. Truly, uh, this is I get it. It's the music industry, but it's the violent, crazy ass shit that goes around there, and people will do whatever to stay in it. That's what they do. And he had to pay me out of his pocket. He has never gotten over that. Oh, baby. Mm. You see this RICO charge that's about to come? This conspiring and peering peer up the club and ruining or attempting to ruin my life? As God is my witness, I will not stop until you suffer every single iota of punishment, until I have every second of recompense that you took for me. For every tear that I had to cry or my children had to cry, I am going to get a million back from you. Wow. I will not stop until you 
pay the price for what you did to my life. And for all you people out there on the internet and in cyberspace and in the far reaches of my life or the perimeters or wherever, who always like, oh, she just saying that to get some hell. What you got to say now? What you got to say now? I had some youngins on the internet that ain't even old enough, that weren't even alive when it happened, arguing me down, cussing me out, calling me everything but a child of God. Go check Instagram. It's there. Harassing my life. Harassing me. Oh, you lying. He ain't do that to you. You just want clout. You just chasing clout. What is that to chase clout about? How is that clout chase worthy? It doesn't even make sense. Well, I guess it would make sense in this new generation. I can't, you know, and I know like everybody's like, well, JLo, let me tell y'all something. And I've said it before, JLo is for JLo, all right? And I would agree with a lot of the TikTokers that are saying, listen, JLo only uses, I'm from the Bronx, I'm I'm from PR, I'm Puerto Rican, to further herself when she needs, like, when she turns it on when it's conveniently for her. Let me ask you guys a question. When has JLo ever given to the neighborhoods that she quote unquote grew up at or in, especially that pizzeria that she's talked about is her favorite pizzeria. When has she ever given to that whole block that she says that she used to run around with her hair all crazy? When? That's JLo is for JLo. So for me, it's like, I wouldn't be surprised if JLo did you know has stayed quiet about this conveniently because not because she wanted to protect you know, Diddy, and she doesn't like talking about, you know, her relationships. No, I think that this is a little bit steeper than that. Also, I also feel like maybe there was some abuse. Maybe there was something that she saw. She got cheated on. I know that much. I heard, I mean, she got cheated on by, I think it was Superhead. That's what I heard with Diddy. Yeah, I mean, it's deep-seated with this. Yeah, so it wouldn't surprise me if she knew something. But you better believe I will have my say. I will have my say. Hashtag having my say. Hashtag the dopest nerd ever. Mm. Hashtag Ebb Talks. Y'all ain't seen or heard nothing yet. Yep, yep. You said Pete. Hold up, hold up. What did you say? Uh, right, 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 right. It talks to me. Thank you. She said pizza probably didn't become her favorite until she realized it was Selena's. Nothing she says is it's her own idea. No, nothing. Her music is not her own. Um, she doesn't write her own shit. She her vocals, like she doesn't. She's not, and I, you know, y'all are like people were saying, Well, you're a Latina, you should definitely no. I said I'm a realist, I'm a Latina, but when I see something fake and phony. Yeah, I'll definitely call it out, you know, because it's important. Like that that's an important piece to call out, in my opinion. Okay. So let's go to this article, which further supports Miss uh uh Rubin's, you know, allegations, a lawsuit, and everything that happened. Now, this is from 2011, and this is the Daily Mail. Okay. Now, let me go a little bit, let me make myself a little smaller. P did it quietly settles multi-million dollar lawsuit with three nightclubbers shot by his protege in 1999. Now, I find it interesting. Why did did he feel like he had to quietly settle this? Because he was acquitted. He wasn't found guilty. Now, was it his gun? And maybe that's why they're like, you're at fault because he was your protege. Therefore, we're going to sue you. It's interesting. I don't know. That's interesting, but hey, women shot in the face received 1.8 million. Okay, that was Miss Rubin right there. Jamal Barrow was deported back to Belize. This would be uh, uh, Shine, was deported back to Belize after serving nine years in jail. Rapper Sean P. Diddy Combs has settled a multi million dollar lawsuit with uh, three. Of the people that were shot, by the way, uh, in the New York nightclub. Uh, it, that was revealed in 2011. Natanya Rubin, 40, was shot in the face during the 1999 attack at the new club New York and has received $1.8 million, some of which has apparently come from the star's own pocket. She was hit in the nose and suffered seizures because of the severe bullet fragments lodged in her face. 
All right. On the night of the shooting, Combs was in the club with then-girlfriend Jennifer Lopez to celebrate his former protege Jamal Shine new record deal. But a row, but a row broken out. Excuse, but a row broke out with clubber Matthew Scar Allen. Shy pulled a gun. This is funny. They say that he pulled a gun and began to fire, hitting several bystanders. That's interesting. Because in the initial articles, in the initial articles, they say that the witnesses saw Diddy pull the gun. That's interesting. That's interesting. You said, Rabbit, I'm from the Bronx. Trust me, when I tell you, Jenny forgot the block. She has not done a thing for the Bronx or Puerto Rico. I could say a lot more, but I have to email you. No, email me, Michelle. Um, I completely understand that. I just think that she just, like I said, she she reps it when it's convenient to her. That's when she does that. That's when she does that. So, yeah, you know, uh, apparently people saw that. I don't know. So this is just letting you know, this is 2011, okay? Uh, along with the uh, along with Ruben, with two other victims were who were paid five hundred thousand and fifty thousand for their injuries, according to the New York Times. Shy was jailed for nine years and deported to his native Belize for the attack. He was he was in jail for nine years and deported. Okay. He said, Rabbit, uh, come on, hon. I know you have personal biases, but remember, he's abused every woman he's been with. Do men like that? Uh, make exceptions though. Uh, what do you mean? I'm confused, Jennifer, by your comment. Let me explain that a little bit. Um, you said, Rabbit, come on. I know you have. I do. We all have biases, myself included. But remember, he's abused every woman he's been with. I just said that, Jennifer. I said it's very likely was a very abusive relationship. It makes me wonder. But I wonder how much she's also not saying, uh, and how much she's hid because it's that is the common thing, Cassie had the weapon hiding it in that lawsuit and that's what Rodney Jones is saying that JLo did so it's a very very likely an abusive relationship i'm not taking that away uh that's what i said earlier i don't know if you missed that okay so she yes yeah, she might have been afraid that's exactly what i just said jennifer um but i do have my biases you're absolutely right okay i'm sick of people with money and power and they didn't get away with it well that's Hollywood. No worries, Jennifer. I was like, no, I said that, love. I promise you I said that. Okay. So Combs was cleared of any wrongdoing, but both he and Shine, as well as the now shot club owners, shut club owners, excuse me, were targeted in the 130 million legal battle for compensations in 2008. During the trial, Ms. Rubin, a beautician, mother of two, said when she was shot, it felt like a flaming hot sledgehammer hit me in the face. Today, Diddy declined to comment on the payments. So that's what happened there. I'm sure a lot of folks, uh, you know, had to figure that out. Insurances, companies had to come in as well. Right, right, T-Maker. If dude will slap his own mom, imagine what he'd do to others. I think he's, he's just an abusive person, period. I, like I said, I think that J-Lo saw a lot and she hasn't said a lot. And I think that there's more to this than what meets the eye. I don't know what I think. This is just my opinion. I think that, you know, she's with their man at the time. And, you know, she's just doing the ditty thing, going to clubs and stuff like that. She takes the weapon, puts it in her purse, and then hands it to him when he needs it. That's what I, that's definitely, I see that. But I also feel like J-Lo being silent of what happened if she saw Puffy shoot. She saw Puffy shoot. A lot of witnesses saw and then they all stayed quiet. It makes you wonder how many folks were paid off. When this initially broke, people said they saw Diddy shoot. And then suddenly went from that to he was acquitted? How? How was he acquitted? And in 2004, let's go to this interview. In 2004, very interesting interview, okay? Why would you call a witness to, to, to testify against me if after I saved Jennifer Lopez's 
life. This is what Shai said. This was back in 2004. Watch this and let's do some commentary. Guns, drugs, money, violence. Mm. Shine's new album touches on many familiar themes associated with the hip hop thug life. But one thing is conspicuously absent on Godfather Buried Alive. Any overt or discernible reference to Shine's one time co defendant, label boss, and the man who arguably has had the biggest impact on his life, Sean Puffy Combs. Mm. As you know from the media standpoint, your trial was the Puffy trial. Look how young Shine looks. Very young. Okay. He was like, what, 18, 19 when the shooting happened? You feel that worked against you all, the fact that 99% of the focus was on him? Obviously, he was the Uber star, and I was just up and coming. So, you know, yeah, it's going to be a show. But he used that to just, you know, just threw me off. Like, you know, it was, it was just terrible, man. To many, Jamal Shine Barrow is an answer to a trivia question as the man who once stood trial alongside Sean Puffy Combs. Mm -hmm. While all eyes were fixated on the hip-hop mogul, few paid much, if any, attention to the plight of his 22-year-old protege. It's crazy, right? Now, three years into Shine's decade-long sentence, for the first time ever, the imprisoned rapper speaks on camera about his co-defendant and the infamous trial that landed him here, behind bars. People probably have the impression that you're just consumed with the idea that, you know, justice wasn't served here and that somebody turned his back on you. It's not a matter of, you know, turning your back on me. Like, how do you call a witness to testify against your comrade? That witness Shine is referring to is Sharice Myers, a bouncer who was working inside Club New York when shots rang out that December night in 1999. What did Miss Rubin say? He, she said that he paid witnesses, he paid a bunch of folks, the, the bouncer of the nightclub. Look, this uh, MTB article, let me highlight something, make myself smaller, put some comments down. Look at this. What does it say right here? No one, this was when it happened. No one has been charged with the actual shooting, but the Associated Press quoted police sources as saying, eyewitnesses told them that Combs was a gunman in the incident. Mm -hmm. You don't say. Lawyers for Combs and Lopez could not be reached for comments. There was a quote, uh, Combs publicist Dan Clores, uh, as saying Combs and Lopez were victims of circumstances who had been in a life-threatening situation when they were stopped by police because they took off in the car, by the way, when the shooting happened. It's interesting, right? I mean, you know, some, some folks forget to change the narrative of their articles. That's what they do. They do do that, you know? I don't know. Crafty Kids, you only know what that is what he's done all his life. How do you explain him being a free man now, even after so many have stepped up? It's a great question. You know, he's, he's free now. But was he the shooter? Is it? That's the question. He was deported, became a politician in Belize, turned his life around. I get that. But then may I ask you a question, is that really justice for the three victims? Especially when you have the main victim in critical condition, the one that was shot in the face who said, did he, did it? And he was acquitted? Is that really justice? That he served nine years? Let me know in the chat. I'm glad he's free, but he served nine years. Did he commit this crime? Was he paid off by Diddy later on and say, hey, don't say nothing? Like, listen, you know, you served your time, whatever, whatever. Uh, him and Diddy are friends, by the way, just so everybody knows. They are friends. Two years ago, he went on the Tamron Hall show and he said, you know, Diddy... Diddy and I, we stay friends. We're still good. Oh, really? I don't know if I could be friends with somebody like that. I don't know. I don't know, y'all. 
But hey, let me know what you guys think in the chat. In court, Myers claimed that she fell on top of Puffy during the shooting and said that he did not have a gun. But even as her testimony helped exonerate Puffy, it implicated Shine. Mm -hmm. Myers told jurors that it was Shine who first opened fire inside the club, letting off two shots toward the ceiling. Shine's lawyers conceded that their client fired his gun, but only in self-defense. Shine has maintained from the beginning that Myers' testimony, asserting that he was the first to open fire on that fateful night, is untrue. If I'm telling you that she's lying, and you saying, hey, you know, well, she helping me. But I'm facing 25 years. And you looking at probation. Yeah. Yeah, those are the things that you understand are unacceptable. You don't mm -hmm. have to hold my hand. You don't have to do nothing, but don't don't try to hurt me. What can it's interesting, right? It, isn't it interesting? You said absolutely not. Katie says absolutely not. Word in the street is that he paid him one million. But uh, they money laundry, so it couldn't be any. Yeah, so they couldn't be traced. That one million couldn't be traced. Just like the one million that Keefe D said that he was supposed to receive and never got. Kate says, no, uh, no, not justice, but it wouldn't it be double jeopardy now? I don't know. That's a great question. Everybody's got a price. Everybody's got a price. Right? Um. It's crazy looking at this now and thinking back, well, I don't know about you guys, but like Diddy, there's a lot of death that surrounds Diddy, you guys. A lot of death, a lot of darkness, a lot of evil shit, like crazy. Hey, Checkmate says it appears that he had a habit of making girlfriends, carrying his, the girlfriends carrying the pum pums and making people take the rap for him. When he loses control. You ain't never lie. This is that's that seems to be the theme, checkmate. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah, you said yes, it would be double jeopardy unless they can charge him under new charges. But has the statute of limitations run out on this case? That's a great question. Right, Vic, you don't you don't reach that level without doing some bad shit. But I mean, I'm just saying like there is and I have the conspiracy rabbit ears, so I could definitely say it without feeling like y'all are going to nail me somewhere. Um I don't know who he's who this man like thinks he is. And you know, Re was it Reggie White who said that did he will likely take his life if he's not found because he's not going to want to deal with any of this shit. He, he will Jeffrey Epstein the situation. Um, this is what Reggie White said. So I'm, I don't know if I believe that, but I, I don't. Would y'all want to go to jail for a long, long time finding all this evidence? Did y'all see the pictures of the computers and the different things that they were taking out of this guy's house? It's, that's what I heard. That's what I heard. Yeah, he's going to, that's, I, I hate to say it, but people, people are predicting that. You said, I totally agree with that, about him taking his life, himself out. Should be closely watched. He should be closely watched. Yeah, one of his bodyguards said he would unalive himself. I think so. I think that if, if law enforcement doesn't get him, soon enough or at least uh there's nothing to be done here he's going to unalive himself he really is it, i mean I, i'm just saying it's a lot against him okay continues to haunt shine to this day is that myers wasn't called by the prosecution mm -hmm. but rather by his co-defendants legal team in his eyes a move that doomed his own defense wow this woman was the most damaging witness of any witness mm -hmm. she was worse than the prosecution's witness right. which destroyed me because the prosecution is saying i'm this belligerent reckless you know okay corral fella right. and then my co-defendant is saying the same thing that was it that was right. it
MTV News recently asked Sean Combs to respond to Shine's allegations, and he emphatically refuted the rapper's interpretation of events. What? He's always refuting something. You guys know that? You know that? You said Jennifer's like, Epstein didn't Epstein himself. Jennifer, I agree with that. I, listen, I got the rabbit conspiracy theory ears. It would not surprise me if he was set up, just like I'm saying. I honestly, look, I think Diddy is a really bad guy. Okay, I'm just going to say that. But I also feel like there's others that are above him that have Diddy has helped cover up and have vice versa. So it wouldn't surprise me if like like you said, I don't think I think Epstein, Epstein was I think Epstein was murdered because there was a lot more that was going to come out. Personally, I, I that's what I'm saying. But it wouldn't surprise me if something happened. Like if something like Diddy does it to himself or somebody, somebody's going to do it to Diddy, something, something that they're hiding just doesn't make sense. I did not force anybody or tell anybody to say anything that 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 would damage or hurt Shine's case. I just wouldn't do that. That, that would not be my intent whatsoever. And, you know, that, that's that's all I'm really going to say about the matter, not to get into any negative back and forth, because y'all know me over the years on MTV News being involved in certain things. Right now, my life is positive and I'm, I'm going to keep it like that. Just as damning as Sharice Meyer's testimony, according to Shine, was the team of lawyers appointed to him by Sean. Combs. Appointed to him by Sean Combs. Yeah, you know, and you're right, Rem. I mean, MTV did an investigative report on one of these, their biggest cash cows at the time. Yeah, not biased at all. Right, Rem. You'd have to understand, like, even this report. Would this be bias on Shine and whatnot? You're absolutely right. Um, yeah. Anyways, let me see what you guys are saying. There's too much around this man that, that's that been deemed a coincidence, right? You know, he just fell on somebody. He didn't have the gun. Uh, yeah, it's just a lot, a lot for sure. Shine says Murray Richmond and others were at one time on the payroll of Combs' record label, Bad Boy. Because Puffy's defense implicated Shine in the shootings, Shine says having his own lawyers bankrolled by Bad Boy posed a conflict of interest. You know, and it's this was 2004. So then I'm wondering what made Shine, and if Chico's right, was Shine paid off at the end? Serving nine years, was he paid off for, you know, his time shine becomes a politician which is great i mean i hope that that this was a genuine move for him uh but did he get deported and then become a politician did he like how did all of this go down because it's not making sense and then they become friends and they're friends still friends as i understand it anyway um the fact that your lawyers as it turns out originally were on Puff payroll on the bad boy mm. payroll. That's that's part of this current effort to to get the case retried, right? More or less, more or less. Yeah. Can you talk a bit about that and 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 when you learned that they were on the bad boy payroll? Well, it was always on the payroll, you dig. But that was at a point where I thought that was my comrade. So you know, I ain't have it like sense. that. Yeah, right. I, you know, I was just I was a fledgling artist, like right. you know, I didn't. Shine album didn't come out yet, so I didn't really have it like that. But at the point where, you know, he called the witnesses, you know, to do me dirty, then you understand that, you know, well, man, if these guys is working for him, oh, because I went to the judge like three times complaining about inefficiency with my lawyers. Cause hmm. They was just dumbing out. Like right. witnesses be on the stand, they would ask them two questions that didn't make sense and then sit down. It's obvious that they were selling me, you understand, in order mm -hmm. to appease him. You know, there was a dual loyalty there. Shine's trial. That's interesting. Um, and again, you Clive Davis. I'm like, that day, that name is the devil for sure. Lynn, Lynn. I love your comment. You said, I think that our collective mind will be blown when we see how deep all this stuff goes. I think people are done with secret societies, elites, gatekeepers. You know, I had a conversation with, with one of my uh, good content creator friends. And we were talking about um, how 
people think of the Lu the Illuminati as being like, you know, the secret society, the elite and all this other stuff. But you would be amazed of how often just regular schmegular folks like myself, like ch you guys all in the chat, we could be part of societies without even really knowing about it. Societies aren't always about money motivator. There is a control component. There is this mind control of culture control. Um, consumerism control of things right so i started thinking about that i said you know sometimes it, it's really about it could happen at a workplace it could happen at a church definitely um it could happen within maybe a family it could happen with different units where truly if you think about it there are elite groups systems exchanges that happen and we could also be part of that problem if you just sit back, because when we think of the Illuminati, we think of like this higher power, some group that some people are a part of, but do we really know who is? We don't, right? But it's like, it's always up there like that. Just a thought. Checkmate says everyone was compromised up to their ears. Right, right, right. Just because, like, yeah, I heard. Um, every, everyone reminds me it sounds like a cult podcast. You just would be shocked. You'd be shocked. You guys, we just never really know. You said, yes, it's called the internet. <laughs> it's called YouTube. That's what it's called, y'all. Go log off right now. Attorney Murray Richmond hmm. responded to Shine's accusations by telling MTV News in a statement, quote, I had absolutely no connection to Puffy Combs. My checks were handed to me by Shine. Wow. I'm sorry he feels animosity towards me. I wish him nothing but the best. Sean Combs echoed those sentiments, telling MTV News that despite Shine's charges, he remains supportive. I'm not forgetting about Sean. My prayers go out to him. Any support that, that, that is needed. Yeah, you better not. for he, he shouldn't have forgotten about Shine. Okay. It, you know, we here at Bad Boy, we still here for him. And, you know, we know he's on Def Jam. And we, sh we wish him the best of luck. It was an unfortunate incident. Nothing that the man didn't, um, meant to do. He was acting in self-defense. He didn't deserve 10 years. And that's my statement. As you know, Double XL reprinted an interview with you from a couple years back. There's a piece with your mom in there. And there's also a response from Puffy in there to some of, some of the allegations mm. that are made that your mom makes. Can I ask you to respond to some of those? Puff in this in this says that uh, from day one he offered you his legal team as well. That he said that Johnny Cocker and his guys could represent you as well. Categorically untrue. He says you offered to pay for your appeal. Absolutely. He said there's no beef between me and Shine. Absolutely not. Everything's cool between us. Would you agree with that? I mean, there is no me and and and, and Shine. Like it's you know. There's no relationship there to have yeah, a beef, right? Exactly. You know, he doesn't exist to me, and you know, it's just really that simple. Wow. I wonder what changed. I wonder what changed. Uh, did a girl says uh, Diddy's lawyer is Danny Masterson's lawyer? Yes. Sean Holly is. I did post that on the community tab, so everybody's aware. Sean Holly um, is one of Diddy's attorneys, and that was one of. Danny Masterson's attorney. If y'all believe in coincidences, Two questions for you. Do you miss? Let me know. All right, let me play this clip, you guys, because here is Shine. This is two years ago. You know, uh, he talks about how he's turned his life around. He's a politician in Belize. Um, listen to how he answers these questions. Flip on my uh, journey to where I was going which is always a world leader. That's so interesting that you feel it's a blip because it was and is the thing that defined you for so long before this chapter I, of your I, life. I think maybe because in, in media, sensationalism is what grabs people. Uh, you See, know, I but, think but the for opposite. me, like when I, when I walk around New York, yeah. everyone is like, Shine, you know, your album got me through college. Yeah. You know, I love your music. No one's thinking about that night but i think your fans in some way believe you were wrong not just by the legal system but also by the industry so here you are this rising star the next big but was he wrong he was found guilty i don't believe he was the shooter personally i know he was found guilty and diddy was acquitted i think diddy was always the shooter he was found guilty he was young okay and he gets out of here serves his time and then moves to Belize. 
and what I'm hearing is that he was paid off later on by Diddy. Was there any real justice to the people that were shot? Diddy, your voice. It, it is as distinct as his voice was. And I remember the comparisons. Yeah. And you were on your way. Even you were quoted as saying you thought you were going to be a billionaire rap star. And you ended up behind bars. And the two people who were there with you that night went on to be two of the biggest stars in the world. What was that like for you watching them shine yeah. and shine live in darkness? Hmm. You know, I, I think everything is about timing. And, you know, the opportunity that I have today to impact the world, uh, everything that I've been through is really worth it. Because I'm not just a leader in Belize, but I, I'm a world leader. Because the ideals and the principles that I represent, which is integrity, which is loyalty, which is honesty, uh, you know, having yeah. uh, moral purposes. You uh, said two critical things, loyalty and honesty. Yeah. I know that you and Puffy are friends now, and he has supported you. But people believe that you went to jail because you were too loyal. You know, I think. Did he go to jail because he was too loyal? Yes, um, he was supported. He served nine years and was supported. He became a politician in Belize. So keep that in mind. Now, some folks, I saw some, you know, uh, in the chat as well, saying that the reason why he stayed quiet, was okay with forgiving Diddy, or at least moving on from this, was because he was paid off as well. I don't know. In the, in the Belize House of Representatives, unfortunately, like most uh, Congresses and National Assemblies, you have people that aren't loyal to their constituents and to serving the public interest. So what I've been through is not about Puff. I'm nobody's victim. That was about me. That was about my honor, my integrity, which propelled me to be exactly where I am today as a Belizean leader and a world leader uh, showing examples of the best that all human beings have in them as far as character and integrity, ethics, and moral. Two questions for you. Do you miss the music? Do you miss rapping? Because it is a gift. Yeah. Well, you know, I always tell people uh, in the House of Representatives, you're the voice of the people. The people elect you to go there and be their voice, and it's the people's house. And, you know, if you ever listen to me speak in the House of Representatives. He's very political. I mean, definitely. He doesn't look like the... The shine that was in, you know, in jail back in 2000s and something, you know, you could definitely see a difference in him. It's just like I'm at Madison Square Garden, you know, um, <laughs> because you you have to be able to communicate, uh, you know, the narrative of the people, their demands, their dissatisfactions. Um, and you have to be able to do that forcefully and, and very, uh, you know, um, systematically it has to have a method, a rhythm. So it's similar to, you know, when I made music, because I never made music just to make music. I was mm. the voice of the voiceless. I was the voice of all those kids that were still in Brooklyn, still in Belize, still in Compton, still wherever, in urban societies where they're systematically discriminated against and subjugated and destined to spend the rest of their lives in jail or in an early grave. So when I was making it's music, I was making music for them. And if mm. you listen to my first album, the first thing that I said was, you know, dear America, I'm only what you made me, young, black, and crazy. Please save me, right? I know that you come from a political dynasty, your father, history. What do you guys think in the chat? I mean, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Do you guys feel, I, I had to harp and get back on this train. I know I did a little uh, uh, upload. Watch it. Watch the upload. Let me know what you guys think. Do you guys feel like J-Lo, there's more to the J-Lo situation than what meets the eye? Was Diddy the shooter that night? Or was he rightfully acquitted? I don't know. What do you guys think? Is there real, any real justice in this situation? Or w is it justice because everybody was satisfied at that time? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I am going to let you guys go because I got to go tend to Baby Bunny. But again, just wanted to talk a little bit about this. Shout out to everybody in the chat. Thank you guys so much for your support. And I'm going to say to you guys, Dallas, Wim, thank you for gifting five memberships. Please put a heart in the chat if you got a membership by whim. And Rihanna, I'll check the email in a minute. Thank you guys so much. You guys have a great night. Rabbits out. Bye, guys. <laughs>